as you've heard, I'm Jan Plongowski, and I'll be talking about Splat Plus Finale. Uh, so what can you expect from my talk? First, we will, um, I try to introduce the concept of Sfinare, what it is, more or less. Then we start with Enable If, which is like the quintessence of Sfinare in, in current C++. And then there will be underscore T and underscore V uh, additions to the, to the standard. Mm, then we'll think a little bit about where should we actually use Sfinare because it can be used in multiple places. Uh, like syntax wise, uh, syntax wise, and then uh, at the end of this small section, there will be a little bit, um, a little bit more complex example, and one that is, I think, very practical, which is a detection idiom. And in the end, uh, we'll end this talk with a couple of alternatives, such as tag dispatching, compilation time if, or concepts, of course, which are uh, upon us uh, from C plus twenty. Okay, so <clears throat> what is Sfinare? Actually, uh, please uh, don't hate me. I have no idea if I'm saying this right in English. Uh, in Polish, I would say Sfinare. Um, but it's mainly the acronym of substitution failure is not an error, as you can see with, you know, with uh, highlighted first letters. And this basically refers to the situation in C++. Uh, where an invalid substitution of template parameters is not itself an error. And it was first introduced uh, by David uh, van der Voort, which if maybe any of you was at my module stock is basically the same guy that actually introduced the first uh, sketch for the modules in C++. Um, well, and all this acronym is basically related to <clears throat> certain programming techniques that, that actually um, uses this weird addition, weird situation where a substitution failure is actually not an error. Uh, so yeah, let me let me show you in uh, in practice how it looks like, because I think that it may actually um, be a lot more clear. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's take a look at this code. And can you see, can you see my mouse? Is it just a highlighter? No, no, just a laser pointer. Oh, OK, yeah. And, so here we have small structure bar, which has only a type depth called internal type. Then we have a template with type name T. It basically returns a T semicolon semicolon internal type. And it's a method called, it's a function called foo that takes a const reference of type T, that is a templated type, template parameter. And, you know, and the variable name is T as well, but small one. And the only stuff it does, it prints just you know a static string return zero. That's it. That's it. So in the main function, we are trying to call this template with two types of arguments. First, an instance of the structure bar, which is like here, and the second one is the instance of integer. So the first call is probably quite straightforward. And after all the substitution, we can see that uh, the compiler would actually try to um, substitute t uh, bar for the t, and and so by trying you know by, by trying to do this properly, it would basically change the t everywhere in here for the bar. So this would be bar semicolon semicolon internal type. This would be a const bar reference, and this actually is a valid. It's a it's a valid substitution because the bar has internal type. So this would actually be the same as double. So we would have more or less function like this and a call to that function. But what happens with the next call, which is an instance of integer? Um, well, we got an error, but it's it's not because of the substitution. It's a little bit different because it says no matching function for call to foo uh, with int parameter. And this is an error because we have no matching function. And you can see it here that the compiler actually saw this template uh, foo as a candidate, but template argument deduction substitution failed. So you can see that substitution failure here is shown just as a note. It's not an error. So, you know, you can, uh, yet again, what the Sfina means. And you can see that, of course, he tried to substitute T with end. And I guess that we all know that the problem is here, that there's no 
internal type, uh, you know, inner member of type int of the class int, right? So that was a problem. It doesn't exist. So the compiler doesn't see this as a valid, um, as a valid member. And so uh, he doesn't see this candidate as viable. And because of that, there is no other candidate to pull for the, for the you know, with the name full for int. So to fix this, we can simply just introduce an overload for a foo that would return an end instead of some internal type, take an end, and then it would work with no problem, mainly because the uh, foo bar would call uh, a special type, you know, that there's, um, uh, it would call the substituted uh, template of foo, the method uh, that was created from this template. And then a foo of zero would probably try this as well. The solution would fail. So the only other method to be available would be this one. I'm actually not sure which one of these would be first, but um, but there is no problem because only this is valid for int and only this is valid for bar, so it all works. So. Um, Let's uh, go through what I said a little bit, uh, you know, during this explanation. How actually compiler looks at these uh, templates because will be, um, I think, will be more or less uh, important later on. So the first name lookup, we see the method, uh, we see this method bar. So compiler would try to uh, foo. I'm sorry, foo method foo, and so compiler would try to check everything the same foo and see if this actually is good for us is if it's the method, if it takes the proper params, et cetera, et cetera. So if it will be a template, you will try to deduce types for template argument values uh, for function templates. And so for example, as we had with t equal t in for t equal to bar, and then if substituting all those occurrences of the template parameter leads to an invalid type, because for example, it didn't have internal, uh, internal uh, type member, uh, you know, with the name internal type. Uh, if this leads to some invalid type, uh, this function will be removed from the overall resolution set. And so after checking all the foos that we have and creating all the, you know, all the substitutions um, on templates, etc., we end up with some set of viable functions that can be used for this, for this specific call. And the base, basically the candidates whose params match the arguments most closely is chosen. So there are two corner cases here, let's say. Uh, the one is when the set is empty and the compilation fails. And this is what happened with our end, uh, you know, with our example that the first time because we called it, there was no actually available function. So sorry, no function to call error. And the second one is when we have more than one candidates that are chosen and there are, you know, that were deemed uh, as, a, as a great match. And this would be also an error with ambiguous call um, description of the, you know, as description of the error. Okay, let's take a look at enable if. Enable if more or less looks like this. Uh, this, this is a possible implementation. I think it's not very hard. We see that this is just a struct, uh, which is empty. It doesn't have anything. And it has, uh, it's, it's completed struct that has two template parameters. First, the condition that is the uh, update boolean. And the second is some type name t with a default value equal to void. And then we have a specialization of the struct. So we see that we have a special case that if enable if has condition equal to true and some type, doesn't matter which, but it has uh, the condition equal to true, then the structure will have uh, the special type def with a name type with the same uh, type as the second template parameter. And this is very important because you can see if there can be type or cannot be type. I think that you can kind of try to, uh, you know, look at this uh, just the same way as we had with internal type previously with the bar and the end. And basically how we use this is like that. Uh, type name, enable if, we have a certain condition, and then we have my type, semicolon, semicolon type. And if the certain condition is, of course, met, then this type member will be of the same type as my type, because this would be a type def. So all of this expression will either fail or will just, uh, you know, end up as a 
my type given here. So here we have some very easy example. We have a method foo with a argument t of type uh, capital T that is template parameter. And this return basically uh, this returns the t. It returns the parameter, let's say, as you can see from here, uh, only if this type is arithmetic. So if we would call it for int, for example, we would uh, get this method would exist and we would get who arithmetic. Uh, otherwise, it maybe wouldn't work. But to, to actually um, do this and to make compiler let us do this, we would need to add second function. So we can do this simply by, you know, negating this uh, Boolean value here, our condition, that's all. And by doing this, we would make sure that for all arithmetic types, we would get for arithmetic. And for all the others, we would get basically um, this version of the same function. So this function foo would exist for basically all the types, all the possible types. Um, but its implementation would differ a little bit. And here it's, of course, only a different C out, but uh, you can basically do whatever you want inside, right? Okay, but it is, as you can see here, it is kind of long and uh, not very readable. Uh, so let's go to our underscore T's and underscore V's. So when C14, we actually got this uh, nifty underscore T, which is basically just a type def, or maybe rather a using uh, for the enable if the microphone microphone type. As you can see, it also takes condition, also takes type name T, type name T, also uh, the, the default value is also void, and it just passes these template parameters to the student enable if. And it just lets us, you know, omit the writing type. So it's a little bit less characters on the screen. So yeah. And the same, basically the same is with underscore V. Uh, because, for example, with sudo arith is arithmetic, uh, we, al we always had to do semicolon semicolon value. And, well, we don't need to do this uh, since C17, because the Vs came in C17. You can just write to this arithmetic uh, V, and it would be the same. Uh, because it's just, you know, some concepts that, that does the same. So the same example that we had previously would now look like this with this little addition. We have student enable of T, student arithmetic B. Then we have type. We have our type uh, for is arithmetic. We have our type for enable of, and and foo. So I think that it is a little bit more readable right now uh, than we had this, and it's shorter, a little bit you know uh, as I said more readable. Uh, we'll probably. You know, try to shorten it a little bit more later on. Uh, but yeah, but I think that is it looks a lot better. Um, the question is where to spin at? Because we actually all in all of these examples, we actually had only uh, function return parameters that would you know either get spinad or not. Um, but we can actually do this in a couple of different places. We have this our foo, you know, as uh, that that would use in and return parameters. We have this whole type name with enable with t in here. We have template parameter, which because we can add actually some other template parameters with some default values. If you see with uh, enable if, as you can see, we have plus t, and there's the spina part uh, put in here as a template parameter with uh, type pseudo null pointer t and default value of null pointer. And you can see that it's the same method in here. And then you can use it, of course, as a function parameter as well. Uh, for example, like that. We have this uh, our single parameter t, which is of the type t if that is arithmetic. Or it will be of an invalid type if it's not arithmetic. So you know, spin it away. So out of these three, I think that the the best the best looking one, the most readable one, is of course template parameter. When we when we put stuff in here in template parameters, because then the whole method signature looks a lot better. It looks very readable. You can see everything. And the return parameter of or a function parameter. From and for me, it's very um 
it just looks bad and you need to squint your eyes to actually see uh, what's really happening and where does it begin where does it end but it's actually not the only uh, advantage of the of using the spin and topic parameters uh, mainly because you may have some places like for example constructors that you can also you know add by Svina or add conditionally by Svina or maybe you know change the implementation um but then you don't have return parameter stuff there so you cannot actually add it in there and sometimes maybe you don't want to add special or extra parameter to the method and you don't have one so the only way to actually do this in such cases would be to use template parameter which in addition is of course more readable so it's a win-win situation for me um uh yep and let's take a look at this parameter sphena over here how it looks like uh so this is the stuff that we had on the previous screen and we can actually cut it down a little bit uh let me maybe tell you what is actually happening in here because maybe not all of you actually know what, what's this one so in here we have this to enable ft which as type uses null pointer underscore t which is you know like a dummy type that we can assign uh, assign null pointer to um and this parameter is a parameter of type null pointer t that doesn't have a parameter name and its default value is null pointer okay so i hope that we are seeing this we don't have we don't need to have a parameter name and because we do not need it because we won't use it it's it's only here just to you know just to check our spina and introduce invalid type if if it's you know if it doesn't uh, pass our condition so we won't need to use it so because that there's no need for actually you know giving a name um only an invalid only a default value and default value is also there just because you don't want users to uh they have to you know give this type so the user would only uh, need to pass somehow plus t in here uh you know to this method and yeah and this would just on its own uh also be part of the substitution and it should be and it would try to be you know substitute with the null pointer uh which would compile if this stood null pointer t so it's all you know it's all coming together um but Actually, we don't need to put this whole stood null pointer t in here, which makes it a little bit longer. Um, mainly because I'm not sure if any of you uh, paid attention, but there is a default value of the second parameter of the stood enable and stood enable if, uh, stood enable if and stood enable if p that is void. So we could actually just omit the second parameter. Uh, and make it maybe a pointer so it's a void pointer and to this we can also assign null pointer um so yeah that is a little bit shorter and i think that actually yields you know uh, the same result but there's also other way of doing this uh we can also have a have some type that um that's not over there. You, you don't give the type because the, the compiler would just need to you know uh deduce it. Uh, but in here we are using the value. And as you can see, it's also a little bit shorter, I think. And the main advantage in here is that you can actually substitute this whole value in here for I know some using or some uh, type dev, so it's even more readable. And I think there will be some example later on maybe on the next slide how how it uh, would look like but the important distinction is that uh, the last one where we are using the value instead of a type should only be used for enabling enabling functionality or you know or disabling functionality like the uh, conditional existence of, of something instead of like doing two different implementations and switching between them mainly because uh, there will be a collision in here um uh because of uh, two templates having the exact same type in here uh so you would need to actually use spin a on the type 
So based on the condition, it would be there, you know, the right one or the wrong one. And you wouldn't end up with the same type with the one condition, second condition, because, you know, as I said, this collide and compiler would throw an error. So uh, looking at this example, they you know with the conditional uh, existence, as I said, uh, of the methods, you can see that all of this we could <clears throat> hide in the maybe using like that. And then our template becomes this. It, it basically becomes, you know, very readable stuff that you can see that you have class T. Okay, this one is actually used. And the last parameter is some type name equal to, you know, some um, anonymous parameter that is, is arithmetic of T. So I guess that it's very readable and very, you know, easy to read and easy for the, which is very important with, with uh, templates uh, and in the first place. So I guess it's um, really important to remember this. I should have in here an example, maybe how it looked like before. Oh yeah, it's excellent. So we start with this, with this, you know, return parameters to the neighbor to the arithmetic, semicolon, semicolon value, semicolon, semicolon type, et cetera, et cetera. And then we finish with this. Plus T type name is arithmetic, T to of T, return T. In my opinion, it's like, you know, um, two different things. Uh, I mean, it does the same, but it looks very differently. And the last example is much more readable and much more developer developer friendly. So um, this is very nice. And yeah, let's take a look at our example. So this is the text medium. What it does is basically answering um, answering a question: Does this class has this and that member? For example, in here, we'd like to um, check if our type has a, a method called serialize, which would return a string. And if it does, we would like to call that. Otherwise, maybe you would call std to string method, or you could just, as in here, see out no serialization found, um, and that's it. So, um, Let's try to a little bit remember what we have in here and how it how it looks because later on I won't show this part of code so the rest is more readable. And we have some struct foo and some struct bar. The foo has serialized the bar does not. So yeah, that's it. And then we have a, a templated method print which takes takes a parameter of type t and checks uh, and uses has serialized, which will be the stuff that we'll be, you know, implementing in this examples. And this has serialized uh, uh, of t should actually return a value and tell us if it does have serialized of the, or it doesn't. We are using here compile time uh, if, compilation time if, but it will be, we'll actually talk about it a little bit later on. Uh, so Let's just assume that it works, and if it has serialized, it will be called. If it doesn't, it won't be called, and that's it. And as you can see, we are calling the sprint on both of them. So, uh, yeah, this should have a work. It should say uh, tell us what we need. Let's take a look at the. I think that the kind of first version of detection idiom that is probably not used anymore because it's quite old and uses a couple of weird tweaks. <clears throat> so. We have this template that structure has serialized. It has a helper structure check, uh, which I will cover in a, in a second, uh, but it does have a very important role in here. And it has two type depths. The first is yes, and the second is no. Both are char arrays, and difference in them is size. And that the size difference is very important as well. <clears throat> and then we have a templated method test. You can see that uh, they differ by, by some stuff, but uh, let's just say that you have a method test that should you know, exist and either will return yes or will return no based on the sphena, because one of them, only one of them will exist. And, or I mean, there are two overloads, so one of them will be called. And then we have a console value that's uh, console uh, field that is static and that is called the value. And it's basically, uh, comparing the size of, of uh, this method being called for that type 
that for the templated parameter that is used here for the whole structure and we give in here a zero and uh, we'll cover this later on as well and we check if it is of the same size as yes which basically means that we are checking that we call this function and not this function because this would return yes so if the size of us of the result of a call is the same of the yes so it would mean that we call this one so the field exists okay but how did it really happen so uh let's start with this one as it's a little bit easier one this one is a sink it will take anything in here so we know that we would either you know um, pass this method or anything that we would put as a you know as a parameter would go in here so we know that if anything doesn't pass it, it will return uh, a no so this first step and second steps here we can see that the only thing that this uh, test actually does is it takes this check helper structure with two template parameters and it checks it takes a pointer to it with no name with nothing also you can see that there is no implementation of the methods because it's not needed and let, let's take a look at, this, at those parameters uh, this helper structure is needed actually only for us to make sure that the member exists and that the member is of the specific type that we wanted we knew that serialize would be a method that returns to the string. So um, let's see how it goes. We have a templated method with template parameter C. And here we pass a pointer to a function, to a method of type C, right? There's some member of type C um, that returns to the string and takes no parameters. And then the second, and then the second parameter in here is the member uh, serialize of this, um, it's a reference to the member serialize of a method serialize of type C. So both of these go to the structure uh, here to the structure name check, and the first one is only a type that we have given, right? So it's pointed to a function of the specific, you know. Um, design and the second one would have actually the type that we have given and it would be some value in here so what we do here is basically pass a value that is pointer to a c serialized member and then we pass its type that we would assume that it has which would be you know pointer to a member function that returns string um so if we would have serialized but that would be for example an end uh, member then these two wouldn't uh these two wouldn't match so it would be an invalid type invalid substitution it's okay other stuff is that we have a star here and this only to make sure you know we just make a pointer to the check structure instead of you know doing a check structure instead uh, instead because we wanted to make sure that there will be no uh instant there would be no instance of the check structure created so with just a pointer and uh, the other thing is that we are using the size ups and we actually are making a column here with some value so it's something maybe should happen but um there is a special trick of the size of that existed for some time that actually this the parameter won't get initialized somehow so even if we call this method test that has no body whatsoever in here and it doesn't need the body it doesn't need it to work uh, it would only deduce a size from this call it would it won't call it per se so because it won't call it it won't you know uh, call this function it doesn't need a body you just need to deduce uh, based on parameters which method it is and what is the return type and then check the size of this return type it works like this so so that's nice that we don't need you know a dummy body in here and also uh, here we have passed the zero uh mainly because we wanted to choose this one but i guess that we we don't need much in here i think it would be even null pointer or anything that is you know close to a pointer uh, to make sure that uh, that it would it would somehow match a little bit better with this value instead of going to a sync. 
Okay, so this works. It's kind of all an old way. It's a lot of clutter, all of weird tweaks, and you know, and making sure that everything is working. But we can actually get rid of the whole check structure with a nifty stuff that's called decal type and decal value. So we still have our yes and no one here, right? Mm. We still have our test methods. We still have our size of trick in here. Uh, instead of zero, we are using null pointer. As I said, we can use that, we can use that. It's, it doesn't matter the, this much, right? So uh, it's up to you. Um, and instead of this weird check structure that we had, we have a uh, deck type uh, of stud.val c uh, dot serialized. What is all this? Let's start from the insights. So decal val is basically um, it's functionality uh, from the standard that lets us create a dummy um, dummy instance of a type only only for the uh, for the uh, usage in decal type. So our C structure, our our C type may be easy to construct. And it is because we are doing this for our full and for our bar structures, which has you know nothing in in constructors, etc. But it can it could be as well very you know complex structure that takes all the weird parameters that actually are some other structure, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So <clears throat> we don't need to bother with this. We just want to make sure that the type that the instance of type C, which is this stuff, this will be an instance of type C. Um that we would call serialize on it. So we should have serialized and it should be method and we should be able to call it. And then we'll deduce the type that would be result of calling method serialized on that instance of uh, type C. And all of this is done, of course, basically the same as with size of without, a, without creating any real instance of this class. It's only for the type deduction. So there's something happening. The same was with size of, so of course we still don't need any dummy bodies in here. So it's only no only a, a declaration. There's no implementation for those methods and it's not needed. We still have a pointer in here because uh, we would assume that this method would return some std string. We do not check it in here. And that's quite important distinction. Uh, then what I do is for that it would be, you know, just want to show the deck type and deck val in here. Uh, but we are making sure that it is a method in here because we know that it's not some you know int member. It must be a method, and we are taking a pointer just to you know uh, make sure that it uh, that the instance won't be created based on the parameter in here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just you know uh, just to be uh, as sure as possible. But I think we can go uh, actually a little bit. Uh, a little bit uh, further and get rid of yes and no structures. And oh, uh, you can't. Okay, yeah, here we are. <clears throat> so we could change it a little bit, and we could actually add our bodies in here, and simply return it. And then we could just change our weird size of trick to the const x values and this possible because we have this static const x uh, const expressions so we could change this to static const expression and uh, simply assign a you know a, a, a result of a method call and here i have given uh, instantization of int instead of zero instead of null pointer because well uh, why not uh, because we don't use in here, because we don't no longer use parameter in here, uh, we are using our return value. I just pass an int in here just to make sure that it's the same type here and here. So we will, you know, we'll be double sure that this one will be called uh, first. This will be you now uh, seen as the best fit. Okay, so let's check this uh, return parameter and see what's actually doing here what's happening here and why. Um, we still have our decal valve serialized. We still have all decal types. So we know that it's basically doing the same type. 
Uh, but here we have a comma and a bool at the end. So um, the comma operator is simply actually chaining multiple expressions here. And all of them will be evaluated uh, until valid. If there will be any invalid type, then the evaluation will stop. But uh, it will evaluate all the you know, arguments until they are valid. And then after it ends this evaluation of all of those, it will it will try to deduce the type from the last one given. <clears throat> so what we are doing here actually is simply um, checking if there is this method and we can that this is valid, you know, calling serialize on a on an instance of C, and then we can deduce some type from it, and then we are checking simply a bool value, the instance of a, of a bool value. And we are using type from this. So if this will be invalid, uh, then this whole method will be spin out of the way because the type will fail in here because on the on the first param, and then it would be you know it will be unable to actually uh, deduce the return value of this test. So so be spin out of the way, and uh, the closest to the test event will be this call, and so it return a bool. But if this uh, Check, but if the class C will have a serialized method, this will pass. Then we'll go further. This will, of course, always pass. And uh, type deduced from this would be bool, obviously. So we will know that our test will return a bool value. It will return bool value through. And this will be saved in here in our member value, which, of course, we can do uh, some special type def with the you know, underscore B. So it's same as in, as in standard, because why not? Basically, that's why I actually called it value instead of type or instead of result, uh, just to make it you know as close as possible to the standard. Mm. Okay, so now we have a little bit different version of the same detection idiom. Uh, so in here we are actually using uh, what standard gave us instead of creating this value tab ourselves, we'll simply use stood false type and stood true type uh, values uh, that will have uh, structures that would have value of type boolean and uh, uh, the true type would have existing value with a true and the false type I think doesn't have a value at all so it would probably so using it would call um, would create sorry uh, one of them will have the value, one of the one the other one won't have. So if the other one, which is false type, would be used, then there is no there is no internal field. So using it will actually spin away uh, our call. Um, but let's see what we have in here and what has serialized that is a little bit longer because we have a default we have a sync in here that is you know false type, so we know that it will return a false. Uh, but this one should be a little bit different. We know that takes t, okay, so the standard, and we have this weird std void underscore t. So void underscore t basically checks all the types within, and if all of them were valid, it returns void. If it's invalid, it will spin away. Um, that's it. It's there's there's nothing more. Uh, so we have this std void t that actually checks that a member of uh, class T with name serialize that it exists. And it tries to deduce this type if it is allowed to deduce type, if it's able to, and it's a valid type, then the void T would return void. So this would be a serialize of T comma void and end the bracket. And what this, Structure what this template does, it basically inherits yet again, but it doesn't inherit from the stood true type. No, we are actually using to the same that returns either true type or a false type. So it's the second check. And if our condition will be uh, will be passed, uh, this structure will inherit from the true type. And if the second condition won't be passed, then this structure will inherit from the false type. So We'll have true type only only in in uh, one small subset of the you know of the um, types given. 
<clears throat> so what we are doing in, the, in this is same. We take suit string and we take the other type and we check if those types actually match each other. And the first actually is suit string and the second is basically kind of the same as in here, uh, kind of the same as in previous examples. It's just a call to a method uh, named serialize of the type T, right? We still use neck value, we still use neck type. Uh, so instead of actually checking this method, we are checking both if member, member exists, this is the first one, and if it exists, we are checking if it's of the type stream. So <clears throat> there's also another important stuff in here. Um, the default parameter in here is void. And we are using this std void t um, for, uh, for actually very, very important reason. So, so normally user would call this as serialize with some class that's in here and that will be t, right? It's this one. And because we know that this specialization, because it's a specialization, we only give a T and the second one is basically this one. <clears throat> because it's a specialization, um, we know that we'll be calling this one. So we'll be only going class like, um, we'll only be calling this a here a single type. Um, but the second type will be devised uh, from the default, uh, default value in here. So it will always be void. But because there exists uh, some specialization that also has a void in here, maybe, right? If it succeeds, then it will be given a precedence over the base method because it has, because it's a specialization and the second parameter will be the same. So um, this is like the special trick that uh, lets us omit this parameter, you know, not make user uh, pass this parameter. And at the same time, make sure that when no one passes the parameter in here, always the specialization will be used if it actually exists. It, you know, so we just make sure that the type in here, that if it's valid, it will be the same as the, as the default value given in here, because then the compiler on its own will actually substitute the um, this parameter with a default value that will be the same as the specialization. So, you know, automatically we'll go to the special, special, specialized function. Um, so that's also an FT tweak. And this is basically the end of this weird, you know, going through the different detection uh, idiom examples and from all those, you know, structures, uh, size of tricks, and then using deck level or deck value, uh, deck type or deck level. And then at the end, actually, you know, using some void T and uh, inheriting from uh, stood true type, stood false type, etc. So we also have some alternatives. And actually, maybe using Sphenia right now is not the best way to do this. It was super useful, uh, you know, to actually change the uh, change the implementation of the method at the compile time. To make sure that the method only exists conditionally for certain types, and you know, and also those compile type. Um, but maybe it's not that important. Maybe it's not always the best way because first, the template errors. If any of you, you know, did something with templates, and I'm sure all of you at some point did, you know that the template errors may be horrible. It may be you know abominations, and reading them may be really really bad, especially when we are using STL types which of course uh, are templates on its own and the error can be just, you know, they can just go, go on and on and on. And, uh, you know, one error takes uh, most of your screen and you are trying to see what actually happened there. Uh, the second readability of the error so much, but uh, of the code itself, you know, I, I've spent like the first half of this presentation, uh, you know, going through the different um, going through different versions of the same, uh, you know, Sphina uh, method, and basically there were a huge difference between the first call and the, you know, and the last one. And using Sphina is even in the last, you know, even in the last version of itself, it wasn't that much readable. It's it doesn't need to be. So it's also very important to make sure that 
uh, you really need this and it will be probably you know readable because if it's not it's a lot of overtime uh, to you know to other devs that will be sticking on this code and trying to get what you actually want to do there and the last part is actually nested templates don't work in enable statements it's uh, very unfortunate but if a spin files in the class that is trying to do scenario then it it will actually cause an error uh, because the top level enable if i mean and then in the enable if if you're using them because the top top level of the enable if if the substitution doesn't work surely there's no problem <coughs> it will just you know spin away but if you will be using enable if inside of enable if then this problem uh, during the evaluation of the top enable left will actually be an error or cause an error. So um, it's also not always that easy to you know to to get all of those weird uh, cases uh, right. Okay, let's look at the alternatives. I think that one of the you know much more readable versions of uh, having multiple types of function. Uh, stack dispatching. Uh, it can be used in different ways, but it can be used, for example, with enumerations, or uh, if we are using some, you know, some suit static uh, checks in here, we can use also uh, the stuff that they uh, return. So we can use the true type or false type. You can see that we have a method foo, that is basically what the user will call. Uh, and the only stuff it does, it actually calls implementation methods, like internal implementation methods, pass all the parameters, and passes, you know, a special um, tag. Normally, as I said, it would be enum, and here, uh, and you get just a static value of the enum. And in here, we, for example, check if the type is arithmetic or not, and then we initialize them here so that the value returned will be uh, cast, uh, could be cast in true type or false type. And then we have to, those two uh, full implementations that actually um, have specific type over here. It's either true or false. So you can very clearly see that uh, you have the same method, uh, but if the value, if the condition is true, it will do this. If condition is false, it will do this. It's, in my opinion, much more readable than Skina sometimes. It's also very, you know, readable in here that you check if it's arithmetic, you know, that will return bool because even the you know, name itself suggests that. And you also see what type of values are uh, taken in here. So um, it's of course only usable when you have different versions of the function. So it won't work the same if you you know if you just want if you uh, want for example to add function conditionally somewhere. So you want the full only to exist for automatic types. Yeah, it, it won't work. But whenever you need a couple of uh, different versions, that dispatching is really nice, and I think it's much more readable. So. Um, so yeah, uh, think about it. it may be the way to go. The second time is completion time if, which was added in C++ 17. And it was used also by me in this has to realize uh, example at the beginning. And it's actually much more different from the simple if. Uh, and it looks like this, you just add the context between if and the, uh, um, and the uh, condition. So we have method foo that uh, prints for arithmetic for arithmetic types and non arithmetic for the other types. And then the end, we turn uh, the parameter. Um, okay, it's readable, but the question is what this actually does. So normally, if we didn't have this cons x in here, so it would be a normal if you could think that it may work but actually wouldn't because even if the even if the type is arithmetic the compiler actually uh, would have to compile uh, both branches so the you know the implementation in here and then here so this example would actually work always but if we actually took a look uh, in a second and here we has to realize if for example we call this with a method that don't have has serialized, don't have serialized methods. For example, I would call it an end. Then the compiler would actually scream at us because he would say there is no end serialized. So it's 
it's invalid. So you might have some, you know, you might have some condition that would go on here, uh, but this would be an invalid statement and we can't allow this. So the compiler would scream and, you know, we would have error, completion error. But what this small const, ex uh, const expression here does is actually at the completion time, based on the condition, one of those branches is, you know, is taken under consideration and the other is just cut off. It's being compiled and that is a very important distinction. Uh, it just discarded it. So uh, because of that, it won't throw error. Uh, even if the other code, uh, even if the code will compile only based on the condition. So that's very important distinction. And you know, you see the you see the you see the condition here. It's also very readable. Uh, so also think about it as you know as your alternatives. And the last but not least, of course, is other C plus plus twenty concepts. I didn't do any you know major stuff in here. Just very very simple. Um, Simple uh, things that we have been doing with Sfina at the beginning. So you just create a concept like so with uh, giving it with uh, you just create a template and concept term here that is of you know the same arithmetic type and that is basically the same. It, the value is the same as to this arithmetic uh, p of type t. <coughs> so it will make sure that the that the uh, it will make sure that it's passed based on the evaluation of this. So it's passed if the value of the arithmetic B will be true. If it won't, then it won't be, you know, it won't be comp compilable. <coughs> Sorry for the cough. Um, and you can see the usage in here. We can create two templates of the uh, method foo. And one is simple class T. That would be our sync. It will take everything. And the second one is arithmetic type T. And that will be our, let's say, specialized function that would only exist for our arithmetic types. And if the type is not arithmetic and it will be false, then this method won't exist and this one will be called. So it's somehow a little bit more like a specialization function. But you know, using this arithmetic is uh, simple, the simple stuff. Uh, and because of that, I tried to actually check our has serialized uh, conundrum with the, with the uh, detection idiom. And it's actually quite doable and quite readable as well. You have concept has serialized and with the uh, technique T that requires that the value V of type T uh, passes this condition. And a condition here is that we have uh, a body that is uh, V, uh, we are calling the method serialize of value v that is of type t that we know and we know that whatever it returns should be convertible to such string so this is actually a very you know full check we know that it must be a method because otherwise we wouldn't be able to call it and it must return something that is convertible to string and does need to be string actually uh, because we we don't care about it we need to you know uh why not? Well, if we can convert to it, it's it's okay. So, for example, maybe it could be convertible to string view and not string. Maybe this would actually, you know, be better. But, um, but yeah, it checks if it's method and if it's returned the proper types and that takes no argument. So it checks everything. And yeah, this would look like this. You just have a print method that uh, takes has serialized uh, of t. We need an auto here to actually get the type properly and it will just call t to serialize so this method will exist only for this method will exist only for the types that actually has serialized method that returns to the string and takes no parameters otherwise it won't exist so yet again we are uh, here with two structures one bar You can see that the foo uh, is the method that we know and love and should work. And the bar is the unfortunate castaway that should throw some error. So let's check what the first method would return. It, of course, will just print foo serialized. Uh, but the other method will, of course, give us an error. But let's take a look a little bit at this error and think and go back to the, to the stuff that I said uh, at the beginning of the alternatives is are the do we want errors from the 
template and the spina and it's tweetable. And let's check what's going on here. So we have no matching function for the call to print uh, with the bar. The same as our first error at the beginning of the presentation. We know that there's a candidate that is a template that requires a serialize. And it's a method print that returns void and takes autoparam. So takes type t that we had. Right here, void print has serialized out t and the line 17. And you see that the substitution failed. So it kind of got spin out of the way for this type. That's great. And const rate's not satisfied. Well, there's something new. You see that it's in the substitution of this specific uh, you know, template with the value bar, with the type bar. And you know that for the satisfaction of this has serialized and the requirements with you know the value b of t, there were the requirements over here, right? Requires. Uh, you see that the required expression uh, v dot serialize, you know, call of the serialize method isn't valid because do 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 struct bar has no member named serialize. So it basically tells us everything that we need to know. So instead of being like, hey, something didn't work, we have no idea what, but we weren't able to actually, you know, create the instance, you see that this type, specific type, does not have a member named serialize. And because of this, that, that, and this, uh, you know, requirements uh, were satisfied. So this way doesn't work. For me, it's very clear. It's looking very nice. And the code itself is more readable. So the only, I think that the only downside right now of the concept, maybe that it's C20. Um, but if you're in this standard, I think that it's really, it's really worth checking it out. And uh, if it's not, you still have Sfina, you still have all those, you know, additional tweaks like student enable if, like void T, uh, you know, true types, false types. You don't need to do this old Sfina, old type uh, Sfina with, you know, type devs and size of, et cetera. Um, yeah, and, and that's it. So the question is, I have some useful links in here, but I'll probably put them on the um, on the Confluence page. Do any of you have any questions? Do any of the slides? I'll just, you know, if you want, I can just jump and, and uh, yeah. Okay, so I guess that there's no questions.